Hey, last week I started with the second essay of On Photography and finished recounting my first experience in the Anarbus's work. And yes, it is pronounced the An. I know I mispronounced quite a few names, but this ain't one of them. Just like with the last video, this chapter does not contain any material that is worth assessing with the passing of time, um, which is a structure I used with the first video of this series. I actually found the I agree or disagree format, a more apt way of navigating this material. In this chapter, Susan Sontag draws a lineage from Walt Whitman to Edward Steichen, linking Alfred Stieglitz and Walker Evans in between as two different ways of following Walt Whitman's thought that reality had already overtaken and demystified art. But yeah, when it comes to the Anarbus, I found it befuddling why Sontag places her within this lineage of great artists when she spent four pages absolutely completely destroying her. The only link is that her posthumous show attracted as much attention as Family of Man, the MoMA show organized by Steichen in 55, but lumping her in in this chapter to this point seemed a bit arbitrary. She finally reveals a weak link on page 37. Arbus's view that self-revelation is a continuous, evenly distributed process is another way of maintaining the Whitman-esque imperative. Treat all moments as of equal consequence." End quote. Dion Arbus's work doesn't explore the decisive moment, the way Henri cartier bressons does, for example. Right? I mean, that's, that's a classic example. Arbus's photos are seldom about moments, specifically. She directed her subjects and changed her angles a lot, and her distance to them kind of in the same way a fashion photographer does, which makes sense because she cut her teeth assisting her husband, which who was a fashion guy, and she also worked as a fashion photographer every now and then. Okay, this is where I have to not agree with my dear Susan Sontag. <laughs> See, for example, most of Walker Evans' iconic photographs were not moment dependent in this way either. I mean, with the view camera, using movements to photograph architecture with forced perspective correction. A lot of them were devoid of people or animals even, and there was no decisive moment to freeze then, right? We never think of this side of his work within this context, and it seems just as esoteric a feature to focus on Arbus. Does this mean that every single photographer whose work isn't about the decisive moment is in fact following the Whitman-esque imperative. How about Ansel Adams? I mean, his work certainly did not capture an instant, at least not to the same degree as Kudelka's or Kappa's, right? But it was very much about selecting fragments of reality and sublimating them with painstaking technique over all others in a very non-democratic way. While Sontag is incredibly persuasive with her writing, she is sometimes a bit loose with associations and she favors intent over rigor. So what is her intent here. It is quite obvious to me that she is after absolutely destroying Arbus's legacy. What better way of demoting her legacy than throwing her in with towering icons such as Walker Evans, Edward Steichen, and Alfred Stieglitz, whose reputations haven't really been seriously challenged? She's actually kind of using Arbus as an all-in-one foreboding token of American cultural decline. Quote, but among American photographers who have matured since World War II, the Whitman-esque mandate to record in its entirety the extravagant candors of actual American experience has gone sour. In photographing dwarfs, you don't get majesty and beauty. You get dwarfs." End quote. While this was printed a few pages before she even mentions Arbus, it is such a strategic way of foreshadowing the tirade. Sontag actually changes her tone like the way she writes when it comes to Arbus. She lowers her prose to just an aggressive and messy succession of attacks that made me suspicious whether there is a personal vendetta at play here. Like most criticism, this whole thing is as much about Sontag as it is about Arbus. And I personally feel way more uncomfortable reading the way Sontag describes Arbus's subjects and everything that is wrong with them than looking at the actual damn photographs. Quote, her work shows people who are pathetic, pitiable, as well as repulsive, but it does not arouse any compassionate feelings, end quote. Ouch, why would you use these words to describe someone that 
all you have from them is a photograph. Uh, this whole thing hasn't aged well, and I have to most certainly not agree with this way of viewing Arbus's work. So how do I actually see her work? Well, in 2018, I went to a show of hers here at the Heidi Museum of Modern Art in Melbourne. It was the first time I had seen her work in gelatin silver prints up close and personal. When I looked at the jarringly titled Mexican Dwarf in his hotel room in New York City from 1970, or Young Man with Curlers at Home, I never felt I was looking down on them. I don't know, maybe perhaps because I don't look down on people based on their appearance, regardless of whether they're being photographed or not. In fact, the fact that they agreed to be photographed made them look kind of strong, in my opinion. And after years of working as a portraitist, I I find it beautiful that they're actually comfortable in front of the camera. This whole bitterness in Sontag's interpretation of Arbus's work. I don't know, she seems to be projecting her own insufficiencies. I and mean, We all have insufficiencies and we all do what she is doing to a certain degree, but she seems completely oblivious to her own judgment, yet she professes to be more aware than the subjects in the photos. Do they see themselves, the viewer wonders, like that? Do they know how grotesque they are? It seems as if they don't. When I read this, I mean the audacity of this woman. I wonder whether she reads herself the way we do. Does she see how grotesque she is being? This is not some sort of political correctness bullshit. Like, I'm not trying to cancel her here or anything. I just think that this kind of writing or inner dialogue is like a teenage bully, and I find did hard to reconcile this level of discourse with how much she actually knew about photography, amongst other things. Do we really care if Susan Sontag thinks a man wearing curlers, a little person, a skinny kid or a gigantic man with his parents look grotesque, pitiable, repulsive or pathetic? She even calls them monsters at one point. I mean, for fuck's sakes, I actually think Sontag was way more focused on how people look than is actually healthy, sustainable or even sophisticated. This is of an interview given to The Guardian in the year 2000. When you get older, 45 plus, men stop fancying you. Or put it another way, the men I fancy don't fancy me. I want a young man. I love beauty." End quote. Which is surprising since she's so cerebral when she wants to be. But I guess this mentality kind of ties in with how obsessed she was with photography. Okay, so I digress. Okay, let me... Just the last thing about why I find this whole thing so jarring. If she went into detail as to why we are meant to see Arbus' subjects the way she does, like, why is a man wearing curlers so grotesque? All the explaining she really does is, presumably, viewers are not supposed to judge the people she photographs. Of course we do, end quote. I just don't think this is nuanced enough or unveils any kind of universal truth or, or is even persuasive like she can often be. Come on, she must have matured enough in many fields concerning aesthetics to know that the appreciation of beauty is so dynamic and highly subjective with objects, let alone people, perhaps the one unable to see the democratic transvaluation of beauty and ugliness, as she puts the Whitmanesque idea, is Sontag herself. Then it got me thinking, maybe she's just a really huge receptacle of facts and knowledge and that's about it. This is something that Lisette Model said, I'm paraphrasing her. I'm out of here, next episode about the many different ways in which Sontag is wrong when comparing Arbus to L'Artigue. Have fun, read books, lift weights, trespass, all that. Bye.